Hey guys, welcome back to our study of the Cold War. The Cold War heats up. Today we're going to talk about uh, the Korean War, or from U.S. perspective, um, political perspective, not, not veteran. Um, it's called the Korean Conflict. We never officially declared war. Uh, we haven't declared war since 1942, so it's known as a conflict. Um, but that's what we're going to focus on today, and essentially looking at how Truman's policy of containment um, inevitably fails in uh, in this area of Korea. August 1945, uh, Japan had invaded Korea, and now in 45, Japan surrendering. World War II is over, Japan is surrendering. Here's where the problem starts. Uh, Japanese in Northern Korea, they surrender to the Soviets. Japanese in South Korea, they surrender to the United States forces. The dividing line between North and South, still today, 38th parallel, 38 degrees North latitude. Um, and like we saw in Germany, uh, two nations developed, North Korea and, and South Korea. And here's a good map to show you that. Capital of North Korea is Pyongyang, and the capital of South Korea is Seoul. Uh, 1948, with the development of, development of the Republic of Korea, we see the leader, uh, or South Korea, being taken over by or led by Sengman Rhee. And again, the capital is Seoul. And then 1948, um, the North Koreans develop or create the Democratic People's Republic of Korea with communist sympathies being led by uh, Kim Il-sung here on the left. And the reason I have these other two pictures is because when Kim Il-sung dies, he is succeeded to, the, to, to power by his son Kim Jong-il, who most recently passed away in 2011. And when he became too ill to run the country, he, had, he eventually died in 2011. His son uh, who is now the current leader as of 2014, the current ruler of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. And um, most recently, uh, Kim Jong-un here on the right made headlines for uh, launching missiles over North Korea in a, an attempted, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, military maneuver or military practice maneuver. Um, yeah, a lot of people are afraid of the young young guy, but it's interesting that since World War II, North Korea has been controlled by the same family, uh, just three men. Um, United States removes a lot of its military from Korea at the end of World War II. Um, a lot of them come home. Some of them stay in Japan or are, are stationed in Japan. Uh, but from the Soviet Union perspective, this appears that the United States will not defend South Korea should an invasion take place. Again, with North Korean sympathies lying to the communists, um, the Soviet Union gives North Korea airplanes, tanks, money uh, in an effort to take over the entire country. 1950, North Korea surprise attacks uh, against South Korea. South Korea asks for aid from the United Nations. The United Nations does approve aid. Sends over 520,000 troops to South Korea, with 90% of those being American soldiers. President Truman gave the orders to the troops stationed in Japan to help support South Korea in any way possible. That command of those 520,000 troops is given to General Douglas MacArthur. Now, in this, uh, in this section here, we'll talk about how MacArthur and Truman uh, come to uh, no longer see eye to eye on how to proceed with the uh, situation of North Korea attacking South Korea. The first wave of attacks, again, the, um, the surprise attack sees North Korea pushing South Korean troops all the way to Busan, um, and they successfully, North Korea successfully took over the capital of Seoul. MacArthur, now that the troops are in place, MacArthur makes a counterattack and pushes back and is very successful. So from Pusan, uh, MacArthur launches a surprise attack here at Incheon. And with the push from Pusan and the uh, UN personnel behind enemy lines, they are successful in pushing the North Koreans back all the way to the Yalu, Yalu River. Half of the North Koreans in this attack surrender to the United UN forces. The Chinese, seeing that the attack had come right up to their border between China and North Korea, uh, promise that they are not going to let any American troops come to the border. Remember, China is now fully communist. The communists are helping North Korea. So now China gets involved in the fight with 300,000 Chinese troops. And once again, we see a big push and North Korea once again captures Seoul. This time, though, the UN forces are not pushed as far south, but nevertheless, 
they do lose the capital of South Korea. And it's at this point where MacArthur makes a recommendation to Truman, and Truman re rejects the recommendation. And MacArthur's recommendation is an all-out war against China with the use of military weapons such as our nuclear weapons. MacArthur, I think MacArthur believed that with the threat of uh, nuclear attack on China, China would back down. Based on what happened in Japan, he, MacArthur thinks that China is going to back down. And if they don't, then the nuclear weapons will do the job that they are designed to do, and that is to take out uh, the major factories, wartime producing factories that China has. MacArthur disagrees, or excuse me, Truman disagrees with MacArthur uh, due to China's relationship and support by the Soviet Union. Macar uh, Truman believes that any attack on China would instantly get Russia involved and essentially we would be in World War III and uh, facing a possible nuclear war and Truman was not willing to do that. The final phase we do see a pushback of North Korea with the Chinese assistance and we're back to where we started at the 38th parallel. Since Truman rejected MacArthur's idea, MacArthur being uh, pretty stubborn, Truman being very stubborn, um, MacArthur uh, makes it very well known of uh, his opinions of Truman and his lack of leadership and his lack of uh, support for the American uh, soldiers, the UN soldiers, in order to battle against China. He speaks publicly to newspapers and magazines. He is not, he does not hold back his disdain for Truman. And uh, Truman is forced to uh, remove him from his position, basically fire MacArthur from his position and remove him. Um, from the leading uh, as leader of the UN forces in Korea and um, the treatment of MacArthur by Truman sends us a wave of shock across the United States I mean MacArthur was a, a World War II hero and um, yeah the American people don't like how Truman had been treating had treated MacArthur uh, the American people also had the, uh, the situation of China still on their minds. China had been lost to communism. Containment appears to be uh, failing. So when Truman gets rid of MacArthur, the people know what MacArthur's plan was. Let's, let's push back against communism, and Truman doesn't seem to be willing to do that. Again, that's another, uh, another push, another downside to the people's opinion against Truman's policies. Here we see a few shots, um, uh, photos, of the 38th parallel and it still looks like this today as far as the, the the amount of military there the picture on the left I believe is from North Korea looking south the picture on the right is from South Korea looking north again a 38th parallel a demilitarized zone was established and oddly enough it was by uh, suggested by the Soviet Union to uh, cease fire in this uh, the Korean conflict the Korean War and create this demilitarized zone where no military can uh, can uh, be placed along the border of North Korea and South Korea. And it's still there today. It's still very, very much a hotbed, um, just waiting for one person to look the wrong way. It's interesting, if you watch some videos on YouTube, you'll see um, North Korean soldiers taking photographs of themselves in the demilitarized zone. Um, I don't know, to send home as keepsakes, as memories, or whatever. It's, it's just funny how, how tense things are there, and yet they still have time to take photographs of themselves. Uh, this war cost 54,000 uh, American lives, $67 billion in expenses, military expenses. And as a result, again, a failure or a, uh, an opposed, supposed failure of uh, the containment policy of Truman. The American people turned their backs against Democrats. And they elect in 1952 Republican Dwight Eisenhower, who also happens to be a World War II hero, the leader of the forces of Europe during World War II. Um, when China was taken over by communists, we, uh, we saw a wave of fear of communism spread to the United States. We had thought that the uh, communists had infiltrated the American government. And now that Korea um, has failed or the Korean War has failed, we're able to keep South Korea in the hands of South Koreans. But... Well, with the inability of us to stop the spread of communism in North Korea, and even greater fear of communism is spreading um, throughout the country, and we start to see a witch hunt take place. Guys, thanks a lot. Take care.